Have you seen this? Now, this is the Engines and Metal Weathering Set from AK Interactive. Now, I bought this set myself a while ago and I've been trying it out in different scenarios to see kind of how it actually performs. We're going to have a look at all five products, see how they handle, see how cost effective they are, and also if they're going to give the sort of effects that you are going to want for your particular project. Now, as we go through these, if you have any ideas of different ways that you can use it, and different applications, then let me know down in the comments. Love to hear all the ideas. So this is the full set of the engines and metal weathering set from AK Interactive. Now this set does seem to focus predominantly on creating realistic effects on say tank tracks and on engines and engine blocks or other similar type machinery. So you have an enamel track wash You've got a metallic pigment and a standard pigment, but you've also got uh, two kind of effect paints. Now the first one we're gonna look at is the enamel track wash. Now this is kind of a rusty kind of color, but it's not really a true rust wash, but it's predominantly designed for uh, aging and weathering tank tracks. The second one is engine oil, and strangely enough, it is designed for recreating spilt, dirty engine oil. Now this one has a glossy finish, which is what you'd expect from uh, trying to represent spilt oil. But also, once again, this is an enamel color. Now this one is called engine grime. Now this one is not showing as a gloss, so this one is designed to recreate that matte, slightly greasy, dirty buildup that you get on engine blocks, for example. Once again, this is an enamel color, so you'll need to use either enamel thinners or white spirit or something like that to A, clean your brushes, but it also means you can do things like reductive techniques and we can have a play with that in a minute as well. So this is the first of the pigments. Now this is metallic pigment and dark steel. So looking inside, you'll see it's quite a dark gray powder. And this is going to be an interesting one to play with. The second one is the rust pigment. Now this is not a metallic one, this is a standard AK Interactive pigment. So it'll be interesting to see how this behaves. Okay, so for our test piece, I picked up this bit of scenery, which has got an engine block and some metallic -y bits and some uh, different surfaces we can have a play with. Now this particular bit of scenery comes from the Kill Team Octarius box set from Games Workshop. So I've primed it with a black Mecha Primer from Vallejo and just using some paints from both the Armour Painter range and the Vallejo Air range. I've painted in some red and some blue, but I've also painted in some dark rusty brown colour as well. Because I haven't tried it this way before and I'm quite intrigued to try out the rust pigment on these brown surfaces, as well as that uh, track wash and see what effects we can get with that. So first of all we're going to try out that dark steel metallic pigment. Now I've tried a few things with this and one of the best things, one of the easiest things to use is like a, an earbud or a cotton bud, but slightly more ecologically friendly is some cotton wool. So if you get, so if you get a little bit of cotton wool, scrunch it into a ball, dip it in the powder, you don't need to use any fixative or anything like that, dip it in the powder and just rub it over the, the black. So whilst you can put it onto any colour, I found but so far, I found the best way to get the most out of this is to apply it directly onto a black base colour. Now all you do is basically rub it on and just keep rubbing. The more you rub it, then the shinier it gets, the more metallic it gets. And also because you're using the cotton bud, then it really uh, picks out the edges and kind of almost edge highlights it for you. Now you can apply this over any colour you like, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. If you want a pure dark steel metallic effect, then applying it over a black paint is definitely the way to go. Now if you apply it over another colour, such as the red or the blue, it can make it look like worn down, ground down paint. So it doesn't really replicate chipping, but it's more like high use areas where the paint is just worn thin and kind of worn away. So let's try out the rust pigment. Now this one isn't metallic, so I'm not expecting it to kind of polish up, but using that exact same technique with the ball of cotton, I'm just gonna kind of rub it and apply it to those dark brown areas we painted earlier on. And next I'm gonna apply it over that dark steel effect we've already created with the last pigment. And once again, nothing special, just kind of rubbing it over it. And finally with this stuff, I'm also going to apply it over the other colours, the red and the blue, and see how that kind of affects and what sort of effect that kind of creates. Now one thing I want to try with this stuff is see how it reacts when you apply water. 
So I'm just gonna dip the cotton in a little bit of clean water and just apply it over those areas where we put the, A, the dark steel, but also that rust pigment as well. Okay, so as we're playing with the rusty colors, let's have a look at that track wash. Now with all of these enamel paints, especially these enamel ones, you need to give it a really good shake beforehand. And all I'm gonna do with this is just like a wash, apply it to some of the recesses. I'm gonna also apply it over some of the uh, the rusty areas and see if I can get kind of a streaky kind of effect going as well. Now the next thing we can try out is that engine grime. Now this looks quite a dark browny sort of colour so I'm, I'm just going to basically dab it on and paint it over the surfaces that I would expect to accumulate that dirty grimy build up that you get on engines and machinery. Now this is going on really easily. Its consistency is thicker than a wash but it is a lot more fluid than a paint, even even an airbrush paint. So it's kind of in between the two. Okay, and finally onto the engine oil. Now once again, this is a enamel color. So I've washed my brush out in between each of these in enamel thinners. Now this one appears to be a slightly darker, more glossy kind of color than we had with the engine grime. Now I'm trying to get the effect of, of leaked or spilt oil. So I'm not gonna apply it everywhere. I'm just gonna try and apply it in little dabs where you could get those those dribbles and the the leaked oil coming out of the engine block and also i'm going to have some spilt down on this blue box down here as well so i want to see how it kind of recreates like a puddle of spilt oil so now we've kind of applied all that stuff on comparatively roughly we've not done anything crazy or, or particularly detailed or special with it we can look at that later if you want to but, but first of all i want to see how it behaves without any particular kind of uh, technique basically so while that's drying let's look at the next bit now the next important thing is going to be the price now does it give you value for money well if you were to buy this set and considering it has a range of enamel washes enamel paints uh, through to two different pigments for example then you're looking at about 23 pounds to buy them individually but it is often cheaper to get these as a set. And that's the case here. So for example, at this time of recording, this set is about 16 pound and 60 pence, which is about $19.97 roughly US. So if that sounds good and you would like to check out the most up-to-date prices, then I've put a couple of different links down in the description for you if you like them. Now these are affiliate links, which means that if you do buy something via that link, then we get a little bit of commission, which means we can then buy more things and more bits of kit to play with and try out on here. Anyway, right, so as it happens, I've, this is now completely dry. Let's look at what we've got. Now, first of all, that dark steel is still looking awesome. It looks like solid, dark metal. Now, that engine grind paint, I didn't do anything particularly clever with it. I just kind of dashed it on. Now, one thing I do look at in these effect paints is do I actually need this product or can I recreate it by using a standard paint? So keeping that in mind, that dark steel, that is so easy. Uh, it's even easier than painting it in the first place. So that that passes that test. Now the engine grime, you could mix it up potentially, but it's not a standard black. It's not a standard brown. It's it's that engine grimy color to be fair to it. And when you get a buildup of it, it does have that it's very very matte that it's got a slight bit of texture to it which you wouldn't get in a paint so looking at the spilt oil then yeah it, it's kind of it's glossy it looks like dirty oil it still looks wet it looks like if you tip it it would just flow off so yeah it kind of passes that test as well so looking at the toolbox and this brown canister on the side so this is where we use the track wash and also I tried a little bit of streaking in it using some enamel thinners on the brush now it is a lot less in your face than the dirty down and rust effect for example that we looked at previously it's a lot more subtle it looks a lot like a, a very a fine coat of rust rather than a heavy dense deposit however i have been trying this out on different pieces so for example this is the piece of terrain that i used for the the first dirty down and rust video now in this engine block in here i've also used the engine grime and i've used the oil for, as well for example and I've also used that track wash. And then this piece, it works really well with that dirty down rust and kind of enhances it. And looking at the second bit of terrain, and this is the one that we used to test out and try out that dirty down verdigris. This one, I threw everything at it. I used all of it on this piece. On this one, you'll see the dark steel. 
you'll see the engine grime, you'll see the oil, you'll also see the, the track wash, and, and also that rust pigment as well. So for example, on this metal work here, so first of all it was primed black, and then over the metal work, over these girders, I used that dark steel. And on top of that, in places, I used the dirty down rust, and also used that rust pigment that we've just looked at, using a bit of cotton, exactly the same way we did just now, and at least to my eye, that mix of the that metallic base with the dirty down rust is kind of enhanced by using the pigment as well. So what I'm finding is that by mixing, matching and layering up these different rust effect products, then you get a far greater result than you would do by using one on its own. So on, the, on this piston here, for example, all I've done is stipple on that oil and the engine grime effect paint. Now also interestingly on the gangway here as well, now these were either left black and then used the dark steel over them or painted that blue color and then I just got a bit of cotton and just rubbed over the dark steel over the areas that would have the high footfall. So the areas that people were walking around on. And that actually looks quite nice. Based on what we've been testing here, it would be quite difficult to get exactly the same results using a standard paint, for example. So yeah, based on my style and what sort of things I'm painting, then yeah, I think the engines and metal weathering set is a fantastic tool to have in your set. But if it's right for you, obviously it depends if it matches your style and the sort of things that you're painting. But can you think of any other applications that you could use this set? Let me know down in the comments. If you liked that, if you found that useful, please bash that like button and share it across your social media. And I'll see you for the next project.